Welcome, everyone. Figured might as well go ahead and start, and we got like 30 seconds left on a countdown, but there's already people in here, so I figured might as well just uh, get started. <laughs> uh, how is everyone? I have not done a live stream in quite a bit of time, so I'm very curious on uh, how YouTube is going to um, treat everything here, and also I need to mute this. Um, after you don't like live stream for a bit, YouTube kind of shuts things down for just a second. So thank you all for joining. Um, really appreciate it. I'm going to call this Home Buyer Helpline. I think I'm going to start calling the, these live streams this from now on and start doing a weekly live stream where I answer uh, your questions. Um, so welcome. Let me see here. We have uh, Anna Alicia, Cubs Freak 345, and I'll get to your questions here in just a second. Uh, Emiliano Martinez, uh, REI Stoners, This Culture, Benny, uh, Brando Cooper, This Culture, KE, Liz M, Ed Zero Edson. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, so I'm going to do a quick question and answer, and then I want to show you um, a little bit more about this 2-1 uh, buy-down calculator that I've been working on. You likely have probably heard of uh, this program, and I'm not necessarily going to sit here and like tell you that this is like the best program ever. All I want to do is inform you about the program and uh, help you understand a little bit more of how it works. Because um, I've been seeing a lot of people online just like hard pitching this program as like the answer to high interest rates. Because what it allows you to do is get a lower interest rate in your first two years compared to your rate the rest of the loan in years three through 30. Um, and people are pitching it like it's the answer to solve <laughs> the housing problems or the high uh, interest rate problems, the high monthly payment problems when you're buy looking to buy a home right now with higher interest rates. I don't really know that that's the case, but I do want you to be informed about it and understand how the numbers work. So I will walk through this here in just a little bit. But um, let me go through some questions um, really quickly since we have a few people in here already who have asked. Um, all right, Shoe Lady 64, welcome, David Clark. Um, great, okay. Average mortgage rate if I applied today. Um, I do have a section on my website, uh, so you can go to winthehouseyoulove.com to rates. This is going to show you the national average interest rates. So right now on a 30-year loan, that's 7.144%. Again, this is not a quote from us. This is just the average. Um, your interest rate is going to depend on a lot of different uh, factors, um, like how much money you're putting down, what state you're buying in, what's your credit score, what loan program are you using. Um, and I don't know why your uh, your question disappeared there. Cubs Freak, three, four, five, when do you think is a good time to buy a house? Uh, really, this is such a tough question because we no one knows what's going to happen with the the housing market here in the future. Of course, a lot of people have strong predictions on what they think is going to happen. Ultimately, nobody knows. I think that you need three things um, to purchase a home, okay? Uh, because I, I can't control what happens in my external scenario, but I can control what I do um, and what standards I have when I'm going to buy. So if it helps you feel better, I just purchased a home in uh, July of this month, okay? Um, so I am kind of putting my money where my mouth is. That's the uh, the phrase. So I think you need three things. Number one, you need a payment that is comfortable and affordable. Lenders will often approve you for more than you should take on in a monthly payment. You need something that's going to be really comfortable for you. And that looks different for a lot of different people. Um, sometimes people like to use percentages. It's not always the most helpful because somebody making $30,000 a month, if they have 50% spent towards housing, well, $15,000 a month on discretionary income is, or on their other income, uh, is quite a bit of money compared to somebody who makes $3,000 a month. 50% of their income towards housing is a lot of money with not a lot left over. Or some people may be on dual incomes and they prefer to just buy a home that's comfortable with one income rather than two. So this is going to have to be a number that's comfortable for you, okay? So one, a payment that you're comfortable uh, with. Number two is buying for the mid uh, to long term. So I think you need to commit to owning and being in your home for at least five years um, if you're going to buy a home now. That is to help in case home values do come down that uh, you're able to see that value come back up 
um, in that period of time. You don't want home values to go down and then you have to sell and be in a negative equity position where you have to bring money to the closing table to sell. The third is having reserves. This means that if you buy a home, you aren't going to empty out your bank account. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people do this. I think you need three to six months of reserves. This is your uh, monthly expenses times three or times six. Okay, so if your monthly expenses are $3,000 per month, three months of reserves would be $9,000 um, or $9,000 left over in your bank account after you close on a home. Okay, um, good question though. Um, do you think it's a good time to buy? Kind of answer that with the last question. Um, ultimately, no one really knows what's going to happen with the housing market. As much as we can like make predictions, I just am not a big fan of trying to make predictions about economic events that are entirely <laughs> out of my control um, and unfortunately are a little, uh, little volatile at the moment. Um, Emiliano, I'm planning on buying a home or house in about eight months from now. What do you think the market is going to look like in 10 months? I wish I could give you an answer for that, but ultimately I don't know. I think if you follow those three rules that I had before, that's really going to be a good game plan no matter the market that you purchase in. Um, REI Stoners, as a buyer, would it be a good strategy to have the seller pay down the rate in this market or offer a lower price for the property? This really depends on uh, what your goals are. Um, so, you know, how long-term your goals are, If and it also depends on a lot of like other factors that you can't control, like what is going to happen with interest rates in the future. I don't know. I, I don't feel like having an aggressive buy down on the interest rate is the best strategy. If the Fed can get inflation under control, it's likely the interest rates will come down. I do not think they will go back down to the two to 3% range. I think they may come down closer to, this is a wide range, but closer to like a four and a half to a 6% range. That's probably gonna be more healthy or sustainable. Um, for interest rates, that is if inflation gets under control. Um, will we see that happen? <laughs> we don't know. Um, so it really depends. It's hard to say. You can go through a bunch of different calculations to see which is going to be better here. Um, but usually paying down the interest rate is going to offer more savings long term uh, than a lower price. Um, and Julius, yes, so three months of expenses post home purchase. So that means after paying your down payment and closing costs, you still have three months of expenses minimum uh, to move forward with your purchase. Um, this culture, how many hard inquiries would be the maximum threshold for an underwriter to accept a loan request? Well, the CFPB, which is the government body that kind of regulates uh, lenders who extend credit, is an advocate of you shopping your mortgage. Um, and so there really isn't like a number at which an underwriter is gonna say no. What will happen though, is if you do have a lot of inquiries, a lender may uh, look a little bit closely, a little more closely at your file and ask you for an explanation of the inquiries and see if they created any new debt. They basically just wanna make sure that the inquiries that you have didn't create debt that doesn't show up on your credit report um, and so I haven't run into an issue where underwriters ever said there's too many hard inquiries um, to get a loan approved. Um, and with that being said, just a quick aside too, uh, I am a federal loan officer, so we're licensed in all 50 states. If you'd like to get a quote or you'd like uh, some mortgage advice, you're welcome to email me. My email is kyle at whenthehouseyoulove.com. Um, or if you'd like to get a mortgage quote, you can go to my website and uh, click on get free quote and look at that. Or if you're sitting on the sidelines and saying right now is not the right time for you, that's perfectly fine as well. A lot of people are right now are in that kind of information gathering stage um, and waiting a little bit longer to see what's going to happen with the market after uh, the winter. Um, Alex, <laughs> I'm Kyle. <laughs> I see, it. oh wait, it's like, it puts it in the way. Um, how long does it take a mortgage offer to accept? I'm not entirely sure what you mean by the question here. Um, do you, if you could clarify, do you mean more like how long does it take a, like a, I don't know what you mean by a mortgage offer. 
Do you mean like a pre-approval or an offer put in on a home to purchase it? Jeb, it is a it's a strong. It could be stronger. We've trimmed it down. Maybe we should. Uh, although Jeb, are you are you rocking the mustache right now? Or are you still got you got the full beard? I thought. Um, if I could grow a little bit more in here, that would be fantastic. But unfortunately, I can't. <sighs> it's a real bummer. Um, now that interest rates are so high, should I still be looking at a fir as a first time home bu home buyer in the New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania area? Um, really, again, this is one of those things that kind of with the market, it's so difficult to say on what's going to happen with the market. This is why a lot of people are talking about the 2-1 buy down program is because it does lower your mortgage payment in the beginning. Um, and it might be a good time to, should I go in and just start talking about this 2-1 buy down program? Um, let me know when you want to hear about this 2-1 buy down uh, calculator and I'll show you how it works. Um, but ultimately, yeah. Interest rates are really high. Nobody knows if and when they will come down. Likely what will happen is if the, Fed, if the Federal Reserve does get inflation under control with their interest rate hikes, likely we will see interest rates come down. Again, I don't think they're going to come down to the 2 to 3% range that they were in. They were in that range because of some really aggressive uh, purchasing that the Federal Reserve did of mortgage-backed securities that brought interest rates down. Um, so it is tough. Um, are you and Javier good now? Javier and I have a real, real intense beef right now. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I'd rather not talk about it. I'm just kidding. Javier and I are like great friends. Nope. No issues. Um, would be better to put a nice down payment to a student loan in little uh, to down payment. Let me read that again. Would it be better to put a nice down payment to student loan in little to down payment home uh, or bigger down payment to mortgage in little to student loan? Um, this is going to depend a lot on how big your student loans are. What's your interest rate on your student loans as well? Um, and then also what kind of monthly payment is comfortable for you on your home? Okay, um, if I was in your position, I I like to be cash heavy. <laughs> uh, I'd rather have like liquid funds available than putting it all into a uh, home. I think it's usually best is to put a lower down payment on a home that way you still have money left over because things come up. Uh, you're gonna move into your home and find that you might need to put in more money than you anticipated or you want that money for reserves or for closing costs or just for moving expenses, furniture, paint, you know, all kinds of things like that. I would rather do that and then explore um, paying down a student loan. I think it'd probably be best at that point to talk with a financial advisor on what's your strategy with your student loans, how big are they, and are there programs that you can get into that might reduce your student loans um, other than just putting all that into a down payment where we can't access those funds anymore. That's my personal position on it. Um, but everyone has different preferences when it comes to uh, their finances. Um, yes, and I am going in order of these questions. So I'm going to take a quick second. We're going to talk about this uh, calculator, and I'm going to come back to your questions. I will answer them in order. Okay? Please don't be mad at me. Sometimes people get mad at me because I can't answer the question <laughs> uh, right as, as soon as they want it. Um, I will get to it, I promise. Okay, so if you go to winthehouseyoulove.com, I do have under this tools section, a 2-1 buy down calculator. Okay, 2-1 buy down. This is how it works. It works on a normal loan. You can get a conventional loan, FHA, VA, USDA, and all use a 2-1 buy down. It's not a separate type of loan. It's just the way that you can structure a loan normally, okay? The way it works is the seller or the builder is going to give you a credit. This is gonna be negotiated by your realtor. And then that credit is going to be put into a separate escrow account. That escrow account is going to lower your payment in the first two years of you owning the home. So the reason it's called a 2-1 buy down is in year one, your interest rate is lowered by 2%. In year two, it's lowered by 1%. And then years three through 30, your interest rate is going to be locked in, okay? 
Think of it almost like a mini arm. It is not an adjustable rate mortgage, but it, think of it in that kind of way. So for instance, let's say we're looking at buying a home and let's say it's $350,000 and maybe you're putting a 10% down payment. You talk to a lender and let's say you get quoted a 7.25% interest rate. The interest rate on a 2-1 buy down is going to be the same thing as a 30 year fixed rate loan. The interest rates are not different when using this program. Okay, so your payment would lower by up to $409 per month through this program, all right? This is just principal and interest. This doesn't include property taxes, mortgage insurance, homeowner's insurance, HOA, or anything you might have there. So in year one, you would pay $17.39 per month. You have a 2% lower rate, meaning your interest rate is 5.25% and a reduction of $409 per month because your payment normally would have been $21.49 per month and instead it's going to be $17.39. In year two, your interest rate's going to increase 1% up to 6.25%. So that's $209 cheaper per month than the normal monthly payment. So your monthly payment would be $19.40 and then in year three, it goes up to the 7.25%. It's fixed from years three through 30 at $2,149 per month. Okay, so quick little chart here showing you the payment difference over time, how that increases, and also your interest rate. So you can see in year one, that's about $5,000 in monthly savings. In year two, it's about $2,500 in monthly savings. So we need $7,425 from the seller or the builder to fund the 2-1 buy down, okay? So the way that this works is you first need to talk to your lender about getting this program. And then second, what you need to do is talk to your real estate agent um, because they're going to help you negotiate this. So you can go in here and your agent can do this for you if you want to, just plug in your numbers here at the top and it will show you how much you need to use a program like this. So in this scenario, we would need to negotiate $7,425 as a credit back to us for the buy down. That's about 2.12% of the purchase price. Now, the really interesting thing about this program compared to a regular buy down where we just purchase down the interest rate over a 30 year period is that you can actually get a refund back of this money. When you do a permanent buy down, you can't get that money back. You just have to recoup that money through your monthly savings over time. And this can take three to five to seven years to recoup depending on your scenario. With this program though, if you were to refinance or sell, let's say within 14 months, you would get the money that you didn't use back. That would be credited back to you. So in 14 months, we would get $2,000 credited back to us. If you refinanced in seven months, you would get this credited back to you. One kind of word of caution here on the refinance though, is that the whole reason you would use this program is if you expect interest rates to lower within this period of time, okay? Uh, if that's the case, if interest rates do lower, you still have to have enough equity in your home to refinance. For a rate and term refinance, this is usually going to be around 5% equity needed. If home values do decrease and you don't have the equity needed to refinance, you won't be able to refinance. So please uh, keep that in mind. Some people just talk about like, oh yeah, you can refinance whenever you want without any consequences and that's not that's not the case or without any consideration and that's not the not the case there um lynn enrique seems like such a short period yes uh it is a short period um and that's why a lot of people will prefer to go with something like uh, a permanent buy down me personally i think a lot of people need more money to pay down their closing costs right we could use that seven thousand dollars to pay down our closing costs instead of something like a 2-1 buy down. So me personally, that's where I would I would usually spend that money is in the closing costs, asking the seller for that credit to use to pay down my closing costs or maybe a long-term buy down. However, 2-1 buy down is a strategy. It's something you can use. Um, and again, I don't like pitching it as like, I'm seeing all these people talking about this as like, hey, this is the, this is the secret just worry about the first month's pay or first year's payment and you'll be fine. 
Um, I just don't, I think it's a little disingenuous because <laughs> this is not the answer to housing affordability like this program. Um, it is a program. It is a strategy that you absolutely can use. Um, and if you, if you look at it and you're like, I absolutely want to do this, you can do that. Uh, and we can help you get a loan doing a two, one buy down, but it's not the answer to long-term housing affordability. You do have to qualify at that higher payment or at that higher interest rate. Um, and you will have that for years three through 30. It's only the first two years that are lower. Okay. Um, so let me jump back in here to some questions. Uh, interest rates will probably rise to 6% by September, 2023. Um, you say rise, but they're already above seven. <laughs> so lower, uh, maybe, maybe interesting or maybe a better way to word that. Um, how's home ownership going? Congrats. Thanks. I still need to move quite a bit of stuff. Um, three, two, or I'm sorry. There is also another buy down program called a three, two, one buy down. Also another one called a one zero buy down. They work the same way in that a three, two, one is year one. Your interest rate is lowered by 3%. Year two, it's lowered by 2%. Year three, it's lowered by 1%. And then years four through 30 are your normal rate. Um, a one zero buy down is year one. It's lowered by 1% year two. It's your normal rate. So they're just different strategies. Not a lot of lenders do the three, two, one, and it's also a lot more expensive because you're buying down a full other year, 3% lower. Um, so it might be difficult to get that much money. It, it lowers or it, um, it lowers your leverage in putting in an offer. Anytime we need to ask the seller for credits, um, as the market is shifting more into a buyer's market, uh, you do have more leverage there, but the more money we ask for, uh, the less appealing our offer may be. Um, is the buy down tax deductible? You'd have to talk with a CPA. Um, I do not believe it's tax deductible. Uh, don't quote me on that though. Is it smart to do a temporary buy down? I'm sorry. Is it smart to do a temporary high yield CD with saved down pay money until predicted interest rate and home prices are more in sync, like a six month note? Yeah, this is a fantastic question. And I've been considering um, making a video about where do you store money, depending on how long you're looking to buy a home. And I do think it's smart to save your money if you're looking at buying in six months in something that's not going to fluctuate that much uh, in value. Six months is not a long time to expect any turn, any sort of like uh, high yield. Um, so like, you know, CDs right now are usually somewhere around uh, two-ish percent. Um, at least I believe so. Uh, I don't know. I haven't touched a CD in a long time. Uh, so around six months, like you can't put your money in anything where you're going to expect a really high return anyway. If you're looking at like 24 months from now, you might be able to put it in something where you can expect maybe some decent return. Um, but over six months, I really just want to make sure I don't lose money. So you don't want to take that money and go put it into something like stocks or even an index fund. Um, because you don't want all of your hard earned work of saving up for a down payment and closing costs to decrease. So I absolutely think putting it into something like a high yield CD, um, could be a good strategy that way it, it uh, maintains its level. Um, the hard part with inflation, the way it is right now is, unless unless you're earning above uh, the inflation rate, technically your value of your cash that you're holding onto is diminishing. But over a six month period, it's such a negligible amount that it's not too much of a concern. We appreciate you doing the live stream. Well, I appreciate you being here. I believe it's Robin, I think. Uh, man, I'm so bad with, so bad with names. Um, Pluto. Hi there. What are your thoughts on selling other investments in order to buy a house fully in cash or put down a larger down payment? So here's the thing with finances is like, unfortunately, there's no one right answer. And I think we're all wired to say like, there has to be one right answer. And it really just depends on what, what do you want? What matters to you? For some people, what really matters is having the security of a paid off house. Um, to other people, what matters is the most mathematically right decision. 
both are correct. There's no like morally wrong answer here. Um, so if you're in that position where you're like, I want to pay an off house and you're comfortable with your other finances, you have you have money set aside for retirement and you're comfortable with an emergency fund and uh, you don't have any other high interest debts, I would say go for it if that's going to make you more comfortable. However, it's not the most mathematically correct position. The most mathematically correct position is uh, usually to have a low interest mortgage and to earn higher in investments somewhere else with that money um, or to do a hybrid of the two. Um, one thing you also need to keep in mind is if you are selling investments, you likely will run into the tax on the gain of those investments as well. So no one right answer. Just understand that uh, the one the answer that might be right to you may not be the most mathematically correct and that's okay <laughs> like dave ramsey's strategy on buying a house uh and you know paying it off as quickly as, po as possible is not the most mathematically profitable strategy however it does offer people a lot of uh you know at least with his anecdotes a lot of peace and a lot of comfort and if that's what you want that's perfectly fine go for it um David, I found a deal for a house hack scenario that should work well with an FHA loan. The fourplex has a lot of room for improvements. What's a good way to finance improvements to increase value? Um, FHA 203K. And I do have a video. You can search FHA 203K, win the house you love, <laughs> on YouTube. And uh, that video will come up. Which bank has the best mortgage offers? Um, really the best way to find out what's your best mortgage offer is to shop it around to different lenders. Um, so I'd recommend getting at least three quotes. Uh, one thing that you could do, this is actually new. Um, I added this today. So uh, I work with the Dan Frio team. So we're licensed in all 50 states. Um, and so if you would like to get a quote, you can just click get a free quote. And uh, my team lead, Nico, will reach out to you and help you uh, understand your quote and your options that you have. If you want to as well, you can click compare your quote. And in here, you can take a, I need to update this thumbnail. <laughs> you can uh, upload a quote that you got from another lender. And what we'll do is we'll shop around 80 different lenders to see if we can beat it. If we can't, we're gonna tell you you got the best deal with the lender uh, that you showed us. If we can beat it, then we'll help you uh, go through a pre-approval. But ultimately, we just want you to get the best deal possible. Um, and so this is the easiest way to do that without having to you know, go through a full pre-approval on the whole um, deal. Just upload your mortgage quote. We'll shop a bunch of different lenders to see which uh, deal is going to be the best for you. Um, and I really need to uh, get a second screen because I have like 10 different screens that I'm trying to juggle on here. Tom Thomas, I'd like to say thanks. Your video was really helpful in our house buying process. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. I'm glad that the uh, the videos were helpful. Do you have your own mortgage calculator for download? I do. Um, I have uh, a couple mortgage calculators. Um, one is called the Max Price Calculator. And I'll, I might as well just switch over here and show you. 2-1 buy down calculator is free right now. I'm considering making these other two free, um, but the max price calculator, which I do need to update the design of, um, this one, you can plug in your income and your debts, and it's gonna use the same formulas loan officers do to help you see uh, what you could afford, along with a bunch of different affordabilities. It's even gonna show you Dave Ramsey affordability theories, different affordability theories from other financial experts. Um, and help you calculate a monthly payment that's comfortable for you, not just what a lender approves you for. The other, um, this one I really like, it's called the Loan, uh, I call it the Loan Clarity Advisor, just compares loans side by side. And uh, this does the exact same thing that as $100 a month software does, except I don't charge $100 a month because that's insane. Um, but what it does is allows you to put in different mortgage quotes and compare them uh, side by side, and it gives you an answer on which is the best one. Um, and for some reason, my screen is freaking out right now. Um, what in the world is going on? I don't know. Let me see if I can get this working again. 
Does having an 800 plus credit score help with the interest rate when buying a house? Um, will the buyer still have to pay the 7%? So the interest rate chart uh, for mortgages actually tops at 740. The best rate comes at a 740. So if you have an 800, it's not better than a 740. Maybe you just get like extra bonus points. <laughs> uh, there's no benefit in the mortgage world for having higher than a 740. Um, will the buyer still have to pay the 7%? That's going to depend on so many different factors on things like what's your down payment? Where are you buying? How big is your loan amount? Are you buying a single family or a condo? Is it a one unit or a two unit? Is it an investment property? There's so many different things that go into what is the interest rate. The best thing to do really is just to get a quote. Um, and to take a look at what those numbers are going to be before you move forward. Even if you're in the stage where you're like, I'm not ready to buy right now, you can still get a quote and see what those numbers are going to look like so you can make a more informed decision um, before you move forward. And you can go to Win House You Love and uh, uh, get a quote there if you would like to. And we're not pushy, so we're not gonna like badger you all day if you're not ready to buy. A lot of people are in that position and that's perfectly fine. Um, requesting a broker's price opinion to drop private mortgage insurance. How do I clean or stage my house for this? What stuff will they care about? Um, they're not going to care about the cleanliness of your house as long as it's not like in disrepair. Um, if you're a hoarder, I would definitely clean <laughs> um, because that's going to start affecting like the health and safety of your home. Uh, as far as like general cleanliness or staging, you don't need to do this. Uh, they're going to look at comparables. So what do homes sell for in your neighborhood is think of it that way rather. And how do your home, how does your house stack up compared to those rather than like how clean uh, is your house? So I would not worry about that as long as there's no, like nothing that they're going to trip over or anything like that. Um, you should be good. I have a privately held mortgage that I must refinance in about six months. Um, I have credit dings. Can you recommend where I should try to refinance my $150,000 mortgage? House, been, house has been appraised for $230,000. Uh, yeah, you can refinance with us and take a look at a quote there. Uh, you can just go to my website, whenthehouseyoulove.com. Um, my team lead, Nico, will reach out to you and, and help you through that. Um, if you've had some credit dings, it really kind of depends on where you're at. You can still qualify um, with a refinance, you know, below a 580 credit score. It really just depends on like what kind of credit dings we're talking about. But uh, Nico can help you through uh, that scenario. Um, in six months is quite a bit of time to work on credit issues if you do have those. Uh. A mod, it's a horrible time to buy a home unless you buy an inventory home from a builder that's been sitting. They're discounting those like crazy. Um, yes, I think builders are definitely pan <laughs> panicking <laughs> uh, quite a bit. Um, people were saying it was the worst time to buy one year ago. Yeah, you know what's interesting um, is like three years ago, two or three years ago, people were talking about like, don't buy, there's this big impending housing crash. And then home values increased like 15% and then another 15%. And it's um, it's been interesting how uh, it hasn't quite lined up with the housing crash rhetoric um, that was so aggressively pushed. Um, so not that I'm, I, I don't know what is gonna happen to home values in the future, but it certainly has not panned out the way that a lot of people have uh, created this narrative around a housing crash. Um, all lenders and buyers need to kick back so the feds can kick it. Uh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, real estate mindset. Uh, what is a normally more important interest? I'm sorry. What is normally more important interest rate or price? Um, also are using a G series 24 millimeter FM 1.4 lens. Brilliant scene. Well, I appreciate it. I'm using a Sigma 35 1.4 art, I believe. Um, 
Also, what's a normally more important interest rate or price? I think both really matter. <laughs> um, I don't know that one is more important than the other. Um, however, I do think that it's kind of what we saw uh, before this really weird spot that we were in is really low interest rates allowed people to overlook the price. And they were like, everything is great because the monthly payment is low. And so they were comfortable with prices going up and up and up and up because the debt was cheap. And so I think when we don't consider both is when we really get into this position that we're in right now, where home prices are still up and starting to stall, but interest rates are up and hopefully starting to stall. Um, and now we're in this position where like buyers don't want to buy and sellers don't want to sell. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. So I really think both are important. Um, however, the interest rate has a very severe impact on the savings that you have. Um, I, I really want to like work on a calculator to kind of show or to illustrate this because it's hard to it's hard to kind of like talk about without seeing the numbers. But your interest, like I would much rather have a lower interest rate than a lower price. Um, like if we were talking about, let's say $10,000 in price reduction or $10,000 in points, um, you're usually going to save more, more money with a reduction uh, in the interest rate with points. Um, Joey said, hey there, Kyle, two one buy downs don't work for investment property loans. Any other ideas for what investors can negotiate when trying to make deals? Um, yeah, you can absolutely still ask for a seller concession up to 2% of the purchase price on an investment property. Um, and you can use that as a permanent buy down um, if you want to. Um, you can't do the 2 1 buy down. Um, other than that, you can look for a price reduction, but concessions is probably going to be the best bet to help pay down either your closing costs or. Um, your lost my train of thought, or I'm sorry, a long term uh, buy down by paying points. Jerry said, so Thank you from Fontana, California. You're welcome. I think I've seen you quite a bit around here, Jerry. I appreciate uh, you commenting and uh, supporting the channel. Um, Julius, a lot of home purchase advice is based on what you can afford. Uh, but is it smart to prioritize your personal taste instead? I can't justify the properties at my current income and budget. Um, is it smart to prioritize your personal tastes instead? Um, I'm curious if you're talking about going higher or lower than what you can afford. Um, yes, a lot of home purchase price is, or a lot of home purchase advice is based on what you can afford. Um, and it actually is a lot of what you could afford, not what you should afford. A lender will often pre-approve you for way more of a monthly payment than I think you should take on. Because a lender is only concerned about being paid back, where you likely should be, or at least should be concerned about, does the payment fit into your lifestyle? For some people, they're really comfortable with having a large mortgage payment um, because they really want to enjoy their home. They want to have an, a big home. They want to have an expensive home. They want to have a home with a lot of amenities to it. Other people don't care as much. I'd rather spend that money in their savings or in investments or travel or on just whatever they find enjoyable at the time. Um, and so, yeah, you absolutely can do that, but please don't take off or bite off more than you can chew. Am I using these phrases right? Uh, just because you want an expensive home, but it's going to be really tough uh, to manage. Please don't do that. That is not a great place to be in. Um, real estate mindset. I appreciate your super chat. Uh, I said great insights as a successful residential mortgage loan officer of 21 years. I can honestly say this is a brilliant man. Thank you, sir. Well, I appreciate it. Um, man, you've been a loan officer for just about a lo as long as I've been alive. <laughs> I'm 26. Um, so I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for the super chat. Um, Life is beautiful. Can you be bought out of a rental lease if you find the house you love? This is really going to depend on uh, first your lease contract that you have. I'd suggest going through your rental 
lease and reading through and seeing if there's any options to buy yourself out of that rental lease. Another thing that you can do is talk to your landlord about what uh, options they have. What I've found is most landlords are pretty flexible. Um, and so what this person is talking about is when you sign a rental lease, usually it's going to be for about 12 months. So let's say you're six months into your lease and you found a house that you want to buy, but you have six months remaining in your contract. Well, it's really tough to break your contract and then have to continue paying six months worth of rent. A lot of landlords will work with you and maybe they want two months, three months of rental payments to buy you out of the lease. You may have a clause inside of your rental uh, agreement or your rental lease that says something along those lines. I might explore that as an option. That really is going to be the best way uh, to explore getting out of it. Um, you may be able to talk with an attorney about other ways to exit a rental contract. Um, those are probably going to be a little more difficult to do, uh, but it is uh, a possibility. <laughs> uh, Javier, I can't believe you have the stones to go live after what you did to me. Um, and I'm not going to read your next line. <laughs> uh, so here's the thing is Javier and I are really bad at actors. And I think we're going to act like we have a beef. Um, but what's going to what's bad is we haven't done a live with each other in so long. I think that people actually think that we have a, uh, a bit of an issue. So for the record, I cannot stand that man. I need to take some acting classes to make that stick a little bit more. Um, I've got to go. I'll email you later for advice, please. Thanks. That sounds great. Um, I have a button that shows my email. Hmm, somewhere on here. I don't see it. It's Kyle at winthehouseyoulove.com. Can you refinance the 2-1 buy down and how soon? Absolutely, you can refinance it just like any other loan. Um, so most people are going to do this with a conventional loan. Uh, most people don't do it on a government loan. But with a conventional loan, if it's just a rate and term refinance, which is now called a limited cash out refinance, basically just means that you're refinancing to lower the interest rate, not to pull cash out of your home. Um, if you're going to do that, um, there's not like a set period of time that you have to be in the home. Um, so really you can do it as soon as you would like. Dun -dun -dun. Um, what if the rate ends up lower than 7% in year three? So if interest rates, you're talking about the two one buy down. So let me pull that up again. Um, okay. So you're talking about like, let's say we got, let's say we got a 7% rate and in year one, it's 5% year two, it's 6% year three, it's 7%. So your question, which why is it not on the screen? Hello? That's annoying. I'm going to have to figure that out later. Uh, is what if you get to year three and interest rates all of a sudden lower? Let's say maybe interest rates come down to, let's say, 6%. And you want to refinance and lock in that 6% for 30 years or 25 years or whatever you want to do. Because you don't have to take another 30-year loan if you don't want to. If that's the case, you absolutely can refinance. You can refinance at any point during this period. However, if home values do decrease and you don't have enough money to refinance, let's say you did a USDA loan with 0% down and you didn't have any equity. And then by the time you want to refinance, you don't have any equity then. Like if you want to refinance into a conventional, you may not have the equity to refinance. So all I'm saying here is that usually isn't a problem for people. But I don't like when lenders just pitch the scenario that you can re you can refinance whenever you want. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> you still have to have the equity to be able to refinance. You often still need to have good credit and income uh, and your home to have equity. I already said that. But your home to appraise uh, to be able to refinance. So please don't hear me saying refinance is a possibility as like you can refinance whenever you want. It's not that big of a deal. There are still closing costs associated with refinance. Like, keep these things in mind. It's not just a strategy we can just, you know, do whenever you want, and uh, it doesn't really matter. But I hear so many people talking about refinances, uh, where they're just like, 
yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Just refinance in the future. It's like a very common like sales uh, tactic. Um, or people will say like zero cost refinance when in reality they just absorbed some of your home equity to pay for the closing costs. Even though you didn't pay any money out of pocket, your equity got absorbed by the closing costs. They just increased your loan amount so you didn't have to bring any money out of pocket. So um, I'm not uh, frustrated about it. Um, do, do, do. Have you heard of the boxable casita? Uh, doesn't Christina Smallhorn talk about those things? There is, and doesn't like Elon Musk live in one of those? Um, I've heard of it. I don't know much about it other than it's like a, isn't like a pop-up housing kind of thing. I'm not certain. Um, Javier said, let's just say I found a bald cap and realize he's been running a second channel. <laughs> Uh, ooh, is that a is that a reventure consulting thing? I don't even know what that means. A bald cap. Uh, which speaking of bald balding, uh, have you seen like the toupees that people have now? Like, they look so realistic. And like, I feel like as this hairline continues its way back. Who knows how far this is going to go? You know, we're already here. And, uh, you know, it's on this side too, but I cover it over. So I don't know if that's going to be in my future or not. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to look good bald. I'm a little scared, to be honest with you. That's what keeps me up at night. That and the uh, impending fate of humanity. Um, yeah, this is a toupee. That's exactly what this is. Um, Joseph, evening everybody. Blessings. Um, let's see, answer some of these questions. Boy Ashlon, I've been building my credit for four years. I have a 780 TransUnion, 778, 720. What would I need for a conventional loan for a $100,000 home? Um, those are fantastic credit scores. The minimum credit score for conventional loan is 620. You are well above that. Um, and so lenders will, excuse me, <laughs> lenders will use uh, your middle score, which is the 778, uh, and the interest rate chart tops out at 740. So anything above 740 doesn't matter. You've, you did it. You got to the top. You got the A. Uh, you can't do better uh, in the lending world. So uh, you are the perfect perfect child for a conventional loan. I don't know why I said child. Oh, you know, live streams get to that point where after a little bit of time, you get a little uh, a little loopy, and then I think that just might bring out the best or the worst of me. Sanjay, buy down 321 for owner-occupied dwelling only. Yes, it does need to be a primary residence, meaning you're going to live in the home. You have an intention of living in the home the majority of the year. Uh, with the market we're in and using the 2-1 buy down, would you say putting in an offer at 10% below listing price FHA seems realistic? Um, with the 2-1 buy down, keep in mind that like the seller, to the seller, paying money for concessions and paying money to, or not paying money, paying money for concessions or reducing the listing price nets the same amount of money for the seller, right? So if theoretically 10% uh, below listing price is $10,000 and I'm just using easy math here and the two one buy down is $10,000 to the seller, they're giving up $10,000. They don't really care on where it's coming from. However, if you're asking them to reduce the listing price and offer you a credit for the two one buy down, it is going to make your offer not super attractive. Now the home may be listed uh, above what it's worth and maybe putting in an offer 10% below listing price is going to be uh, a fair value for the home. Uh, the, really the only way to know that is uh, to figure out kind of what the fair market value of that home is. One of the best ways to do that is to talk with a real estate agent and have them run a comparative market analysis 
on that home where they'll kind of do almost like a very abbreviated uh, appraisal, kind of think of it that way, to help you see what that home might be worth based on the homes surrounding it. Um, so that could be the case. Just know that when I see FHA, 10% below listing and 2-1 buy down, if I was seeing that as a seller, that doesn't seem like the strongest offer. It, but it may be the only offer the seller is getting. So this is where your realtor really is gonna help you with a negotiation strategy there. Um, but I would explore maybe one of those things changing to help your offer uh, be a little bit stronger. But it is worth a shot and seeing if the seller wants to counter you as well. Um, how much for a $300,000 home, closing costs and down payment with an FHA loan? Uh, down payment is a 3.5%. Uh, closing costs are gonna depend on the area that you're in. Um, and also uh, a couple other factors along the lines of, uh, you know, what your, uh, if there's going to be like any state tax um, or what like homeowners insurance might be for you that can vary depending on you individually. Uh, so closing costs, usually people just give a rough estimate. I think the best thing to do is instead of running off of an estimate is actually getting a quote um, to take a look at those numbers. When you get a quote, it's free. There's no obligation. You're not committed to anything. Um, so there's no point, in my opinion, to not get a quote uh, because it's going to be the most accurate information you can run off of rather than just saying it, closing costs are usually 2 to 3% of the purchase price. Um, that's what I personally would do. Uh, oh, luxury card store. I missed your super chat. I'm so sorry. Uh, thank you for your super chat. Um, also, it's good to see you here. I, uh, I rem I haven't done a live in like uh, how long, like six months or so. And uh, you used to comment on a lot, of, a lot of lives. So it's good to see you again. Let me add your comment on here. Um, what percentage of income is, is an acceptable amount for available credit? Meaning can too much available credit cause a lender to be concerned even if you have a 795 credit score? Uh, no. Um, lenders do not take a, like they don't consider available credit uh, in your approval. Um, they're not going to look at it and be like, oh my gosh, you have so much available credit. Uh, we can't approve this loan. Uh, that is not a concern at all. Um, and actually with your credit score, having low utilization, which in other words would be high available credit, um, is really good for your credit score. So. I don't see any reason why that would affect your approval at all. Legends of Evil. I just bought a home with 3% down on my own personal name. If I rent out the other rooms, can that income be sent to an LLC that I make afterwards? Hmm. What do you think about that? I don't know. That's a question for a CPA. That starts to get a little weird. And I don't know. From from a mortgage standpoint, that's not an issue. From a tax perspective, I have no clue how the IRS would look at that. <laughs> and I am not a tax, tax expert. Um, so, yeah. Again, from a mortgage perspective, not an issue. You can collect rent. Uh, you know, if, if that's your primary residence, you can still collect rent from people who are living in that home with you. Perfectly fine. Um, if you send it to an LLC, cool, doesn't matter. Uh, from the IRS perspective, I have no clue. Um, I would talk with a tax professional about that. Um, Javier, are you still here? You want to come on for a second? I'll share. It. I'll give you the uh, the link. Just uh, give me a little. A little confirmation if you want to join or if I know Javier he's cuddling with his mammoth of a dog and he also hates me but if you want to settle your beef with me online this is the way to do it um, Edward uh, White House love the quality of your stream what camera and let to use I use a Sony a7 R3 and um, I've been using the Mastin Labs Portra LUT, if I remember right. Um, I switch stuff too much to remember. 
Wanda Payne, does increasing your credit score in 700s give you more buying power or just better interest rate if your salary is the same? Um, it does both. It does help your interest rate lower the higher your credit score is, and a lower interest rate will help you qualify for more. Um, let's see. I'm working on this new calculator called... It's not finished yet, so please ignore if it's uh, you know, not up to par. Um, I call payment to price calculator, and what it allows you to do is put in a comfortable monthly payment that you want, and it will show you what the price would be with a breakdown. So let's put in some assumptions here. Um, let's say that uh, we're getting looking at 7% interest rate net right now. And let's say for fun, we wanna stick around a $3,000 per month payment. We would be approved for are not approved. We will be looking at a home price of three hundred and fifty-three thousand dollars, with you know taxes, insurance, mortgage insurance, things like that. Okay, three thousand dollars a month at seven percent. Let's say that we improve our credit score and we now qualify for a loan at six and a half percent. That three thousand dollars per month will increase our purchasing price up to three sixty-seven. Um, so what was that? That was about. Um, like fourteen thousand dollars in approval, just off, or in purchasing power, just off of that half percent in interest rate. I think I did that math right in my head. <laughs> Win the helm you love with a calculator. <laughs> yes. Um. I'm trying to make more resources to like make it easier to, you know, to explore all this data and these numbers and you don't have to run them on your own. And, and I'm trying to make some resources that are more helpful uh, in that capacity. Um, home buying clause if you're leasing an apartment. Um, I'm not aware of that being built into rental contracts, although that could be something that is built into some rental contracts. Christian Avi, Aviles, Aviles. <laughs> I feel like I'm butchering that. Hey, just showing you love. You definitely helped me out when I got into my house earlier this year. 360,000 at 3.25, only put 3.5% down. That's awesome. I'm glad to help. And uh, thank you for watching. Um, James, I just noticed my, uh, I just looked at my initial closing disclosure and noticed the total payments um, is double the amount the purchase price. Uh, why is it so high? So the closing disclosure is a document there that you're going to get a minimum three days before closing. Um, and this should tell you what your final payment's going to be, your final closing costs, and all the details of your loan that are locked in. Um, it will show you what are the total payments. And let me pull up a, uh, a closing disclosure here. So if you Google CFPB closing disclosure, they have a closing disclosure explainer. And I believe what you're talking about is here. Do, 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 do. This total of all payments. So it tells you the total amount of money you will pay over the life of your loan if you make all payments as scheduled. Um, and we can click in here. Um, and it will show you this includes the principal, interest, mortgage insurance if applicable, and loan costs. So this is, oh, why did it change my page? Oh my gosh, one more. Um, so this is, <laughs> this is why mortgages are, you know, buying a home is expensive. Is, uh, yeah, let, let's see, what is this home price here? It's so slow. So this home, $180,000, over 30 years, you will pay $285,000 for that $180,000 home. It's because uh, primarily of the interest that you're paying over 30 years on that money. So that is why you are seeing that. Do, 
Do, do, do, do, do, do, do. This culture, you said in 2021, six hundred thousand dollar house. 2022, 590 house, 3% interest rate, 7% interest rate. Uh, payment, or I'm sorry, payment 2000 versus uh, yeah, $1,100 increase in payment. Um, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, the interest rate is wild um, in how much it does increase your payment. Um, these are great questions, and I appreciate you all being here. Um, I'm going to get through some more here. I do want to say uh, really quickly, um, if you do want to explore uh, getting a quote, um, you can go to my website, winthehouseyoulove.com, um, and just click get a free quote, choose the state that you're looking in, and you can either start an application um, or schedule a call. Kind of the way that we set things up is you just start an application, you upload some documents, we'll walk through some quotes with you, and then you can start shopping for your home. Um, there's no commitment, it's free. Um, also, I have a couple other resources if you want to talk with or if you want to get connected with a real estate agent. Um, I've partnered with Home and Money, uh, so you can click here. And they're the nation's largest referral service for real estate agents. Um, so if you're there, if you're at that spot, great. If you're not at that spot, if you're like, hey, I just want more resources, um, this home buying timeline I think is really helpful to give you a big overview of how the whole home buying process works. This is where I think you should personally start, which is why I put start here. Um, but it just shows you an overview of the situation uh, if you're not ready to buy right now, because that's perfectly fine if you're not in that spot at the moment. Candace, what is the difference um, between a conditional qualification letter and a pre-approval? Um, sorry, let me flip back over to this page. So a pre-qualification usually uh, is when a lender doesn't look at your credit report, so they don't do a hard credit pull. Um, and usually when they don't look at uh, any documents like income or bank statements. A pre-approval usually is when they do a hard credit pull, which only will affect your score zero to five points. Um, that way they can take a full look at your credit, and then they also take a look at things like your income and your assets to make sure you actually qualify for a loan. So pre-approval is a lot more solid um, and has a higher guarantee of that uh, being accurate. A pre-qualification isn't as accurate, um, but you don't have to do as uh, you know work like submitting any documents to get a pre-qualification. So I think it's worth getting a pre-approval, having a lender take a full look at your credit and your income documents to spot any issues. I'd rather do that then go through the whole shopping phase and spending all this time and effort looking at homes all to run into a problem when you do get under contract for a home. Um, da, da, da. Uh, Robert said, I wasn't approved for a conventional with a 670 credit score. I'm amazed to hear that the min minimums are 620. What's up with that? That's a fantastic question because even though the minimum is a 620, it doesn't mean that you're automatically approved for a loan if you have above a 620. Um, so conventional loans, just like almost every other loan, is approved with a software. Um, and these softwares are called different things. Sometimes they're called desktop underwriter. Sometimes they're called loan product advisor, um, depending on what loan type is being used. Not that that really matters at all. But the software weighs different risk factors. So to get approved at like a six with a six a 620 credit score, I would expect you need a higher down payment. You need a lower debt to income ratio, and you also need some reserves. Okay, so if you're at that spot where you have maybe a high debt to income ratio, uh, you don't have as much money in the bank, you're putting a low down payment, like 3% on a conventional loan, and you have a 620, it's likely that that loan won't get approved. Okay, uh, the higher the credit score you have, the less the underwriting software looks at those other risk factors. So the underwriting software is trying to take a look at the whole picture. The minimum credit score is just if you're eligible for that loan. It doesn't mean if you're approved for that loan. And I know it's kind of frustrating because like, why, like, <laughs> I wish there was an easier way <laughs> for this to work. Unfortunately, mortgage lending and approvals, uh, all the details and nuances of it 
can be complex. Um, and so it is very frustrating. Um, usually what I suggest is people in between the 620 to, to 680 range is they try for conventional, but they also look at an FHA loan because conventional loans usually do have a higher interest rate uh, if you're below a 680 credit score. And really, conventional loans don't start being a really great option, uh, in my opinion, until we get to like 720 and above. Usually you start to get kind of penalized on the interest rate with a conventional loan when you're below 720, when you're below 680. Um, and so if you're between 620 and 680, uh, definitely try for conventional, but understand that you may need more money in your bank. You may need to look at a lower, um, a lower purchase price to lower your debt to income. You may need to look at paying off some debts to lower your debt to income. Um, and you also may need to look at increasing your uh, down payment. And you can talk with your lender about this and have them run scenarios. Hey, like even going from 3% down to 5% down can flip uh, you from a uh, not, what am I looking for? From not being approved to being approved. And um, <laughs> this is the nerdiest pillow I have, as if that's a genre of pillows that I have. Uh, the underwriting software usually will say something like this, approve eligible or refer with caution. So this is like what the underwriting software says <laughs> when you're approved. And this is often what it says when you're not approved. Okay. So even going from 3% down to 5% down can flip you from this to this. Okay. Same thing with like the recent changes in allowing rental history. Showing rental history could help you with a lower credit score within the 620 to 680 range. Flip from refer to an approval. Stacy, hello. Long time, how are you? Um, how difficult is it to remove an escrow account? Um, you can remove an escrow account on a conventional loan um, usually you're going to need 20% down. And so what you can do is you can talk with your lender and say, Hey, I'd like to remove my escrow account. What are your requirements to remove it? Um, likely they're going to need that 20% uh, equity, um, in your home. And at least at this point, I'm assuming you already own the home. Uh, they may want to do a BPO where they kind of do a mini appraisal to make sure that your home value didn't decline. Um, which in this market's probably not declined. Uh, so that's what you would do. Um, oh, Edward, you're saying thanks. Love the video production you do. I really appreciate it. Um, so many YouTube tutorials to try to figure out how, <laughs> how in the world to make this all work. Uh, does getting a quote ding the credit? Um, this is kind of a big, big myth that like getting a hard credit pull, it sounds dangerous, it sounds scary, um, that it's going to really affect your credit score. Um, a credit pull is only going to affect your score zero to five points, okay, on the actual mortgage FICO. Um, on other scoring models like Vantage, like the soft pull mo models, it may impact your score more, but lenders don't use that, okay? Um, also what often happens is like credit monitoring software that you use, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna ha have your credit pulled and they're gonna act like the sky is falling. Like, oh my gosh, you got your credit pulled? Uh, you, your credit score decreased a ton. By the way, use one of our lenders. They kind of use fear as like a tactic to get you to use one of their lenders. Um, so it's not something I would be concerned with. Also the CFPB says you have 45 days uh, to get several inquiries. Uh, it's actually like unlimited inquiries um, on your credit after your first one. So you get a hard credit pull and you have 45 days to shop lenders to get multiple different inquiries and it will only impact your score as one inquiry. All the other inquiries will still be on your credit report, but it will only impact you as if you got one credit inquiry. So please shop, shop freely, don't be scared. 
Uh, Stacy, I appreciate the super chat. You know, I don't see a question if you asked one in there. It just is, uh, oh, they're, um, what are they called? Super stickers? <laughs> I didn't see them over there. Uh, I appreciate it. Tony, what's up? Uh, man, I need to have you on a stream here soon. Um, Stacy, in your opinion, how likely is it to get approved for a home loan after a foreclosure? And the third year is three months away. Credit has been rebuilt. Score is 685 to 700. On-time payments. Um, past three years. Uh, savings. With FHA, um, I think you should be perfectly fine. Thank you, Stacy. I appreciate the, uh, the support. Um, I'm curious, what is everyone's thoughts on, uh, what's everyone's thoughts on, like, housing crash YouTube? Not, what's your opinion on, like, home values, okay? Not, not what's going to happen with home values. What has been your, what's been your opinion or your feeling on housing crash YouTube? Like, I know for me, when I log into YouTube and I just see all this, like, the world is crashing. The Fed crashed this. Uh, like this, it feels like the world is on fire. <laughs> and even though there's there's truth to that to an extent, I'm just curious as someone who is, uh, you know, you're likely in the spot because you're on the stream that you're looking at buying a house or you're looking at um, qualifying for a mortgage maybe soon, maybe a year from now, maybe six months from now. What is your opinion of content like that? That is kind of just playing off of the emotionality of you purchasing a home. Just curious on the opinions. Does the loan amount affect your interest rate? Um, higher the loan, the higher the rate. Uh, yes, but it's not correlated exactly like that. Um, it's all gonna depend uh, really, it's different in different states with different lenders um, at different points and I know that's like every answer in the mortgage world is kind of like it depends <laughs> but ultimately yes loan amount does but there's not this correlation where the higher the loan the higher the interest rate or the lower the loan the lower the interest rate it doesn't really work like that unfortunately Jessica said housing crash YouTube ultimately people just saying they don't know the future <laughs> yeah okay what's crazy is I'll see like some of these videos and like I'll see the titles and I'll look at it and be like, man, I, did I really miss something? Because the title will be something along the lines of like, some breaking news just happened. And then I'll be like, well, just shit, I didn't, I clearly I'm not paying attention because I have no clue what they're talking about. And then I watch it and then they don't say anything. Like, it, I think a lot of people have gotten really good at like, talking about nothing or reiterating a, the same thing multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how? I don't know. I just feel like there's not a lot of information that's being presented, or I don't know, it's very confusing. Um, or Stacy said the walls are caving in. Um, yes, uh, Tony, let me know. I definitely need to get you on here uh, as I'm getting back into doing live streams more. Um, this culture, I look at the thumbnails and disgust for the clickbait they are and skip them. That's fair. Uh, we forgot our crystal balls. Um, do you think the Fed is going to pivot soon? The last Fed meeting, they were talking about something along the lines of like, we're going to do as much as it takes. Um, I'm expecting at least another uh, pretty substantial hike because they don't seem to be giving any time for those interest rate hikes to actually affect the market. Um, luxury card store said the economy and mortgage market will not be another 2008, but prices will soften a little next year. Um, yeah, the, uh, oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this website. Um, I made this chart. Let's see here. I've been working on a couple charts. Um, do, do, do this one comparing different uh, open uh, home like 
home forecasts uh, through like, I don't know why I have Zillow in here twice. Zillow, National Associated Realtors, uh, like CoreLogic, all these. Um, the average growth that they're anticipating over 2023 is just under 1%. Um, all the way ranging from like negative 4% to 4%. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting to see how prices do change um, over this upcoming year. Uh, Roberto said, housing crash YouTube is all for clickbait. Uh, Iwota, housing crash YouTube. Honestly, it all makes the thought of buying a house a bit scary right now. I know it's mostly clickbait, but it preys on my fears and I fall for it. <laughs> yes, uh, totally get that. Um, well, you know, when you hear the same thing uh, over and over again, it definitely casts that little bit of doubt. Um, and please don't interpret this as me saying that that's not, that's not true that's going to happen. Uh, ultimately, nobody knows what the future looks like. I just, I don't find it enjoyable to try to predict what the future is going to look like. Um, it's just something that's completely out of my control, completely out of my prediction. Um, and you have brilliant people with millions of dollars invested in research who still can't give a clear picture on what the future is going to look like. Um, and so it's like, why? Well, I, I don't know that it's helpful for me to try to predict. Um, with any level of certainty what's going to happen. That's why I'm always in the stage of like, how do I control what's within my control here? Uh, Jeremy um, said uh, to Roberto, for example, a 620 might have a maximum backend DTI 50% as opposed to a 670 might have a maximum DTI of 55%. Um, and that would be yes on a FHA loan, uh, and that 5% might sway a U.S. approval. Absolutely. Um, Veg90, hello, if I buy a house but decide to move a year later for whatever reason, would I be able to sell the house mortgage? Or how does that work? Yeah, if you decide to buy and move, um, for whatever reason, whatever reason you want to, you absolutely can sell the home. Um, it doesn't have to be within, or you know, just after a year. Uh, you can buy a home and then like sell it six months later if you want to. Um, another option is after you live in it for a year, you can rent it out if you want to without having to refinance that loan into an investment loan. That is absolutely something that you could do uh, if you wanted to. Um, hi, should you pay any debt that you have the ability to prior to the pre-approval? Um, I wouldn't just go ahead and pay down a bunch of debt uh, because sometimes paying down debt can actually increase, uh, I'm sorry, decrease your credit score. What I'd first do is talk with the lender, see if you even need to pay down the debt to begin with. Often, people can get approved uh, more than they expect. Um, so I wouldn't just go paying a bunch of cash to pay down debt because you think it's going to get in the way. Talk with a lender first. See if you even need to worry about that debt getting in the way. If so, then talk, you can talk with your lender about having that paid down. They can run a credit simulator as well to see uh, and help you forecast if you pay down the debt, what would happen to your credit score. But I wouldn't do that before talking with a lender. They can actually help you strategize if that's a thing that you need or not. Um, cool. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, I have a live upcoming this Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to compare uh, two real life loan estimates um, and show you how we shop different lenders and how shopping lenders on our side actually saves you quite a bit of money. And if you'd like us um, to compare your mortgage quote, um, all you have to do, just go to winthehouseyoulove.com. Uh, here in this tool section, you can go to compare your quote. Just upload a quote that you have from a lender. And then what we can do is look through it. And if you got a better rate than what we can offer, I'm absolutely going to let you know that. Um, if we can offer you something better, then I want to be able to show that to you as well. Ultimately, just want you to get the best deal possible. Um, and this is going to be the easiest way to do that because you can just upload the quote. 
You don't have to go through a bunch of like hoops and hurdles to uh, get an answer on if we can help you out or not. Um, so we're going to be reviewing those uh, Wednesday. And of course, um, if we like use uh, anybody's quote, we're going to like blank out a ton of information. So nothing's going to be exposed there, uh, but we'd love to help you out if we could. So I hope to see you there. Have a wonderful night. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. It's Kyla at whenthehouseyoulove.com. With that being said, have a wonderful night. Thank you all for joining. If you do want to support the channel, um, there is a, a join button. Um, and what it will do is it does give you a badge next to your name. So if I see that badge, it lets me know that your question is going to have priority over everybody else's question. Because as you can see, there's a lot. Uh, and I run through them in a list. But if somebody comes in with a super chat or they're a member of the channel and supporting, um, I'd love to answer your question ahead of time. Um, so if you'd like to support the channel, you absolutely can do that. Thank you everyone for being here. Have a wonderful night and I will talk with you soon.